welcome back to yet another episode on Strictly Flying. Today, we are continuing our flight from Stavanger, Norway, to Fortaleza in Brazil. We've just landed in Amsterdam on our flight from Norway, and we've got a few hours to kill, before boarding our KLM 787 Dreamliner to Rio de Janeiro. Don't forget to also check out my flight from Norway. I've left a link to the video in the description below. Right now, I'm standing in line to get some food in the KLM lounge. There isn't the usual buffet service anymore. However, instead they have a menu, consisting of two options only. I chose the sandwich and a wrap. The sandwich was surprisingly good. And the wrap was equally delicious. The lounge is also very slowly starting to get busy again from my last visits. In my opinion, prior to the pandemic, the lounge was a total disaster, way too crowded, and you were lucky, if you even found a space to sit down. Of course I'm hoping to an end to the COVID-19 situation, however, it's actually a delight to visit the lounge these days. Okay then. Let's go and find our gate. Here she is. The beautiful Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Right next to her, China Airlines is showing off the Airbus A350. I can't really decide which is sexiest of the two. I think I love them both. I've actually never flown on the A350. I'd love to hear which one you prefer of the two. I've always wondered how KLM is surviving these days, as most of my flights overseas, have been virtually empty. I'm willing to bet, that the cargo they're loading on the plane, is medical equipment from China sold to the Brazilian Health Service. It's great to see that there are alternatives to making profit in these demanding times also. Let's get on board our Dreamliner. Here's my seat, 38A. Usually, I prefer to sit in the front. Or at least try to get an economy comfort seat. However, since I knew the flight was going to be more or less empty, I wanted to try a seat further back. Just to get some nice wing views of the 787 along the way. KLM's economy class seat is absolutely fine. I'm a tall person, and I can still place my fist between my knee and the seat in front. Which is, in my opinion, the absolute minimum for a 12-hour flight. USB ports, and a headphone jack port are located under the screen, which is wide enough for a good viewing experience, however, the screen doesn't tilt, but the screen is still watchable from an angle. The movie and TV selection is good, but they could change out their selection a bit more frequently. Or maybe it's just me who travel too much these days. Today of 
progress of the flight can be followed on the flight tracking system, so we will not unnecessarily disturb you during flight. And when we approach Rio, we will pass on the most recent weather information from there. This flight is executed by three pilots, so you might see one of us walk around in the cabin. But you can rest assured that the other two pilots remain on their stations controlling the aircraft. I hope you will enjoy the extra space around you and the service of the cabin personnel, and that you have a pleasant and quiet flight with us. I find it amusing that someone would actually get uncomfortable seeing the captain walking around the cabin. I thought nowadays everybody was aware of the sophisticated autopilot systems we have available. Anyways, it's nice of the captain to reassure us regardless.
All of you who have flown on the Dreamliner previously know about the cool window gadget already. But I just love this feature so much. I wish every aircraft could adopt this. Food is served soon after takeoff. I already know what's on the menu. Pasta, of course. No surprise there. I've flown this stretch countless times. And the route, always takes us over France. Then over the Bay of Biscay, into Spain and Portugal, before leaving mainland Europe over the Atlantic Ocean. This time was very different. We actually flew over mainland Spain, all the way south, just east of Gibraltar. Over the Albaran Sea and into Morocco. There must have been some bad weather, or something significant, that would make us divert so much. Later in the flight, while I was enjoying the scenery over Morocco, the crew handed out their usual 1000 calorie snack bag. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. It was great to have something to munch on during a movie. I've never been to Morocco, but, my god, the scenery over this country is spectacular.
So, then it was time to leave Africa and cross the Atlantic Ocean to South America. These hours up until now really flew by. Now it's going to be nice to watch a movie and maybe a quick nap. After a few hours of sleep, we were already over the Brazilian coast and served a slice of pizza before landing. If you ever travel to Rio de Janeiro, then try to get a window seat on the left-hand side of the aircraft, as the views on approach are spectacular. 90% of the time we always approach from the north, as today. And we are landing on runway 15, heading southeast. Rio is a huge city, with over 6.5 million inhabitants. And it makes for a nice approach.
Boston seatbelt sign has been switched off. Man, be carefully open the luggage bins. You can have luggage in my flat. And I'm saying goodbye to you and to, to minimize the spread of the COVID virus. Please keep an appropriate distance to each other upon the disembarking the aircraft and throughout your stay in the terminal buildings. Stay healthy and give each other some space. Thank you for your cooperation. On behalf of this crew and the entire KLM, thank you very much for your choice. KLM, Royal Dutch Airlines and Sky Team. Now it's time to say goodbye. I really hope you enjoyed this long flight with me to Brazil, and if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to get notified about more trip reports like this. It was a pleasure having you on board, and until next time, stay safe, stay awesome, and see you soon, on Strictly Flying. Thank you.